Hello everyone, I want to continue the series of the Dafiomi on page number 16 of Masachet Nadarim. That is Tet Zayn, respectively, of the Dafiomi, the daily page. We are next to my son as a special guest star today, Netanel. Here we are, I'm going to relate to him some wisdom on the Daf. So it's talking about, within regards to uh, benefiting, if someone makes a vow that they're not going to benefit from something that's got a connotation of a mitzvah. So let me give you an example here, friends. We are talking about a case over here, where it also so similar to Mesechet Roshana in page number 28, it talks about a case where someone has a designated an animal as a sacrifice and uh, can he benefit from uh, the horn on Rosh Hashanah to blow from it from the shofar. So apparently when you're making a, a, a vow against a benefiting from things, we're talking about a physical benefit. But if it's got a connotation of a mitzvah, a spiritual benefit from it, then it is to be allowed to do. So if it's a sacrificial animal which has been designated as a neder, it will be allowed to blow on it on Rosh Hashanah because it's a mitzvah. However, there's another argument is posed from the commentator, the run, in uh, yesterday's stuff with regards to uh, what if someone took a vow that they're not going to benefit from uh, a specific mikveh, a specific uh, ritual bath. Uh, is that going to be allowed? As I said before, to de derive the spiritual benefits from this vow will be allowed. So they'll be able to tovel, they will be able to go inside the mikveh, inside the ritual bath. However, in the winter, it's definitely going to be allowed. However, in the summer, it's going to be forbidden. Why is it? Because in the winter, they're gaining the spiritual benefit which is allowed. But in the summer, they are cooling themselves off, which is a physical benefit. And they made a vow that they can't benefit physically from it. So it won't be allowed on here in that case. But in the winter, it will be allowed because it's got a spiritual benefit to it, albeit the vow had been made previously. However, there's another argument that can case. What if it's in a case during Sukkot? that a person had uh, vowed they're not going to benefit uh, from the, a specific sukkah. However, uh, a sukkah is spiritual. You're allowed to benefit from it spiritually over here from a sukkah. So the answer is that you're going to be allowed to sit in the sukkah. However, one can argue you're gaining a, a, a physical benefit here because you're not going to benefit. You're going to benefit from the shade. You're going to be protected from the sun over here inside the sukkah. So what's going on? You're allowed to sit or not? So it's argued that a Sukkah, the Sukkot is a temporary dwelling. It's a temporary de dwelling, so because it is temporary at this stage in time, uh, it's going to be allowed because you've got a house, you've got an alternative to live in your house, and inside the house you can be protected from the sun. So it's just a substitute. So you're not really physically benefiting from the Sukkah itself, respectively. So it's no contradiction. Guys, interesting insight. Sorry about the noise. Here we are on the bus. You want to say goodbye, Netan, out to everybody? Yeah? Yeah, we're taking on a nice trip. Have fantastic days, guys. And this Mesechet Nedrim 16. Bye.